Okay, awesome. Okay, guys, let's start. Left hand out and slowly chakazuki. Hitch, knee, samp, shi, go, rook, shitch, hatch, kum, jo. Okay, swing high. Hitch, knee, samp, shi, go, rook, shitch, hatch, kum, jo. Hi, Ami. Okay, hex clutch, hex go. And slowly, my get it. Shh. Knee. San. Shi. Go. Rock. Shi. Ha. Shi. Cool. And jaw. Okay, swing part. It. Excellent. If those who haven't trained with me before, if you see me looking there, it's because there's a big TV where I can see all your pictures. Well, 25 of them anyway. Uh, so I'll be flicking through. Also, there's quite a lot of notice, quite a lot of people without their camera on. If you can put it on, I can help you. If you can't put it, if you don't put it on, I can't help you so much, yeah? So I'll be giving kind of feedback, hopefully. And if you've got your camera on, you'll get more feedback. Okay, so um, today's class, we're talking about not only the kind of the grading syllabus, that's the easiest, they're in black and white, but also the transition and what as examiners kind of were looking for, what's the difference between Shodan Nidan and Sandam, um, and that arc that we go through. And uh, like a couple of weeks ago, we did quite extensively quite a, a long uh, course on what we expect for the Shodan examination. And there's a YouTube video, maybe I'll put it in the chat box before we finish, uh, that you can watch that if you haven't, if you weren't on the course, I well, haven't seen it, which kind of explains in detail what we were talking about for short and examination. But very briefly, uh, we, we're looking for kind of a, a good understanding of the principles of karate, not just kind of outwardly shapes, but the principles of karate, uh, the correct use of, of your center, of your hips, correct understanding of your center line, correct understanding of uh, creation of power, like body mass times speed. Uh, and also for each individual, what is the, the fulfillment of their potential? Have they, have they reached their unique individual potential for, for showdown levels? So whether you're a, a 18 year old fit young athlete or a you know, 70 year old pensioner, uh, have you reached your unique individual potential to achieve showdown level? Uh, and again, I'll put, the, I'll put the link in the chat and then if you haven't seen that video or, or on the course, you can kind of watch it to your heart's content. Uh, so we're gonna start off with Nidan. We're gonna do Kihon first, Nidan, Kihon, Sandan, Kihon, and we'll reference Shodan, Nidan, Sandan, and then we'll uh, have a short break, and then we'll do some Kata and some Kumite. A little bit more uh, difficult to explain in depth, but uh, certainly Kihon we can talk a lot about. So, to start, okay, so all Nidan, uh, all Nidan kind of uh, grading is from Jukamai. So we're a nice Jukamai. So all we're gonna do is practice Kizamazuki, Tobikonde, Samonzuki. So from here, this Kizamazuki, Tobikonde, Samonzuki, and then you can show back. So we're going in Kizamazuki and punching and then coming back. So nice and relaxed for yourself. I'll watch what you're doing. But Kizamazuki sliding in. Samonski, three punches, yeah? Kizamazuki, three punches. Okay, off you go, guys. Give it a go. And let me see what you're doing. As always, if you have any questions, uh, then unmute yourself, ask, I will answer, and then you mute yourself again. Okay, so uh, I think the first, the first thing that we're kind of really noticing between, between a shodan and nidan is like shodan is all about kind of, kind of showing that precise understanding of principles. Uh, and, and in order to do that, you've got to hold your form. So in the kihon, the kihon is kihon. With the exception of maybe Ushirigeri, where we make jukamai, everything else is your form is held. Uh, so, so that's shodan level. Nidan level, you're showing the form but you're showing the form and then, and then showing that level of relaxation afterwards. So I'm seeing quite a lot of people who are holding this Kizamazuki out. You're one, two, and there's a stiffness there, yeah? There's a stiffness between, between technique. You're one, holding form two. 
With knee down, you're still showing form, but between those shapes, between those kind of points of, points of kime, there is a level of relaxation. So for now, just practice this. Just practice Kizamizuki Oizuki. And you're pulling, relaxing, like relaxing that elbow. Relaxing the elbow to the Oizuki. So just try one, two feeling, yeah? This feeling on one, two. And that you have that snap, snap, snap feeling. Just try that for now, guys. So just two punches. Kizamizuki, Oizuki. Then make sure it's good Oizuki, yeah? Uh, George, you're kind of punching before your foot lands. Still foot and hand landing at the same time. Basic Oizuki for that second punch. Then Milan in Robert Kunaj, your, your second step. So Kizamazuki and then step Oizuki. No, no, not Kakazuki, step Oizuki. Step punch. Okay, okay, yeah, man, just watch again, guys. So look, you're, okay, from here. Like you don't necessarily have to make hikite for this kizamazuki. That's kind of a little bit kind of knee down level, it's not necessary. But still that kind of kizamazuki like shape, that kizamazuki form is still basic. It's just that it's transitory. So I, I'm not stopping, but nor am I just flicking it. I'm hitting that point, I'm hitting that point, and then following forward. So I'm having that sense, I'm not staying where I am, I'm having that sense that I'm driving in. Driving in, and then the whole body snap, relax, then use that leg to drive forward, pull the oizuki, and then relax again. So you're hitting those two points. This one, two. That's not to say I am making complete hikite. The last thing you want to do is kind of go forward without any kamai, chin forward. No. So from here, you're still hitting that point of kizamazuki, but keeping back to coming back to kamai in that relaxed manner, boom, and then driving in that oizuki. Understand? Okay. One more minute, guys. Give it a go. Any questions, just ask. So a little bit too much back on there, too much hikite on that first punch. Maintain Kamai. You two, uh, Gilesk, J-G-L-I-E-S-K, E-S-C, Gilesk maybe, too much hikite. Guys, a few people are doing this, yeah? Don't make too much hikite. Boom, kamai. This is a guard, yeah? Kamai, so, so you're hitting that point, but you're keeping, you're keeping that hand ready for the next technique, yeah? Not moving forward with your chin first. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, man, good. So, like straight away, like that knee down, knee down level is, the ability to make that form, like textbook form, correct, correct connection in your technique, with an instant relaxation afterwards. Not an artificial relaxation where you're kind of making another shape. You go from this shape to this shape. No, you're kind of hitting that form and having relaxation afterwards. But still, on that point of form, it's good. Okay, next though, what I'm still wanting to maintain form. So from here, we're making Yoriash a little bit sliding in, and then Tommy Conde is driving in, and we're landing in good shoulder and that hip square, hip relax, hip square, hip relax, hip square. So a hip vibration, three punches, and then we come back to Kamai. So we're going very dramatically from a relaxed flowing to form, back to flowing again. So I just want you to try that. I want you to try that relaxed Kizamazuki, then driving in Oizuki, Yakstiki, Chokazuki, then relax back to Kamai. Understand? Okay, give it a go guys, one minute. Any questions, just ask. Then Frank Jennings, relax that elbow a little bit more on the first punch. Soft elbow guys, soft elbow, especially on that first one, yeah? Petra, three, four punches all together now, yeah? Kazamazuki, then Samotsuki. Josh Dean, come forward with Kamai, yeah? And hips, use your hips. Four punches now, yeah? Four punches. Kizamazuki step, Samonski. 
Barry Sheen, what's that front knee wobbling? On the second third punch. Then uh, Ichiban Karate, it's a little bit too much Ikite on that first one, yeah? Make sure you just come back to Kamai. Then Tara Lee, Shawman, there's second, third, fourth punch, hip square each time. Okay, yeah mate, yeah mate, let's just watch guys. I, I, gotta, uh, I don't want to spend forever on the, the first technique, we won't get anywhere. However, like again, you're showing form and then in, in short on examination, you've already done this, yeah? Short on examination, you know, you're from first movement, you're making it amberai, and you're making Tommy Conde salmon ski, I'll show you from this angle, yeah? You're, you're making Tommy Conde salmon ski, so, so you're sliding forward, three punches. So you're sliding forward, shoulder dash, hip vibration, hip vibration. That's the first, the first combination of shoulder and syllabus, right? Tobi Konde, Samwon Ski. So you're kind of engaging that hip three times, each time shoulder. There's quite a lot of people who are relaxed, kind of punching, and then maybe finishing the shoulder at the last one. No, you have to be able to fire that back leg, back leg rapidly, yeah? Like twitch, twitch, twitch. It's about developing that core twitch to create Great technique. So, so from here, just be really strict with yourself that you're punching, shawman, shawman, shawman. Each time, hip vibration. Understand? Okay, last 30 seconds, guys. If you've got any questions about this, ask now. If not, we're going to move on. Andrew, watch that back heel coming off the ground. AP. Then uh, Mungo man, take your time. It's your it's your back leg that's punching, not your not your fists. So no matter how fast you move your fists, you got to sink it with your back leg. Okay, good. Then one thing I would say, slow it down, guys. Like a lot of you, your fists are writing checks that your back leg can't cash. So what you're doing is you're punching really quickly, but there's no, no body mass behind it. So you're, you're kind of going, you know, you do the first punch and you're going one, two, three. Then nobody can fast twitch that back leg or that center uh, as, as quick as that, yeah? So, so just take your time. First one in, Kizamazuki, lock that into Shomen. And then relax, fire that back leg. Relax, fire that back leg. So you're training your body to have that fast twitch. Train your back leg and your abdomen, or your tandem, Japanese call it, to have that fast twitch. You'll only do that by building speed. Remember, speed is ego, technique is what karate is, yeah? So take your time, get it right. Understand? Yes. Good. Okay, there was no questions asked. So, let's do four speed and power. I just said do it slowly. We're going to do four speed and power, and then we're going to move on. Okay, yoi. So, left leg forward. Okay. Itch! And you can show back if you need me. Knee! Sun! And one more. Chi! Cha! Ay, yum, hey. Ah, relax. Good. And shake loose. So, like, quite a stark contrast from um, short on syllabus where. You know, like the first movement of the first combination showdown, just Tobi Conde sliding in, Sambon Ski, three punches, where everything's precise. I mean, you're sliding, but you're maintaining stance right the way through, maintaining good form, uh, maintaining center line, and backfiring that, uh, like back, back leg firing. Whereas this, there's just that moment of freedom between the techniques, moments of relaxation. So you're keeping the same form, keeping the same kind of technique, but you're stripping away effort. You're taking away kind of like that physicality of it and just relying on, on that kind of fast twitch muscle. So try to kind of keep that in mind as we go through these combinations. Okay? Okay, good. Okay, next. So again, Jukumai. So all we're doing is Kizamazuki Maegi Oizuki. Freestyle, yeah? So this Kizamazuki, Kizamazuki Maegi Oizuki back freestyle. Okay, so one, two, three. This one, two, three. And find your space, yeah? And find your space. Okay? Give it a go, guys. Try. Let me see what you're doing.
Paul Langley, relax your shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> then Rolf, make sure you're still landing in shoulder, yeah? Still Kihon form. On those points of Kimei Kihon form. Evelina, make sure you connect that back leg with the Oizuki. Don't fall into the last punch. Uh, John H. H. Sen, a little bit kind of pulling back too much on the hikite. Again, remember, don't, don't go forward. Don't go forward the Maigiri like this, completely open, yeah? Still kind of your main Kizamazuki. Boom, you're kicking through your guard. You still got that Kamaya. Yeah? Then Mike BC, a little bit stiff, yeah? Real soft, soft elbow. So you're coming back to Kamaya. You're holding out that, that Kizamazuki a little bit too long, yeah? Yeah, 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 that's it. That, that's nice, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, guys, we won't. Uh, oh, hang on, just one more. I can't see myself. Okay, now I can see myself. Okay, um, look, this is kind of basically the same same combination. Combination, just like in the showdown syllabus where they kind of came in twos, they came in pairs, like you're chesting one kind of a basic principle uh, with, uh, with with two combinations. Then the knee down is a little bit similar, um, but in this case, it's an extra challenging because you're trying to create. Tobikonde or this kind of sliding action within the Maigeri. So, so for sure, for sure you're driving in, there's a little bit of yori sliding in uh, when, you, when you make the Kizamazuki. But you then don't just kick from that position. You want to have that fluidity. And so when you're kicking, you're driving forward that little bit more. Okay, so that's a little bit challenging. Made more difficult by the fact that you've got to be able to drive from that back leg, that supporting leg, into Oizuki. So some people, are not sliding at all, so be mindful of this. Some people are sliding, so you're doing one and you're sliding, but then you're falling into Oizuki, and that back leg is in fire. So, just like all Oizukis, you're not synchronizing this foot and this hand, you're synchronizing this foot or this leg and this hand. So it's this leg that is firing in to create that power. So just because you've kicked, just because you've slid forward, that doesn't mean you don't drive in with that back leg. Understand? Yes. Yep. Okay. Last minute, guys. Last minute. Give it a go. Have you got any questions? Now's the time to ask. Don't be shy. Catherine, see a little bit slide. It might be difficult with your shoes on in the... In the but a little bit sliding in on the mic. Then Tanya McAlif, Alif, then don't, don't hold your form so much at the end. You've made Oizuki, relax straight away. As soon as you hit that point, relax. Jason Smith says, hey, nice, nice. You've done this before. Oh, Paul, oh, that, that, that little bit more show in, in, the, in the last punch, Paul. Well, you're just trying to make your sensei look good. Then, uh, Hussein Pops, is it? When you kick, like I can see you sliding in nicely, uh, the person on the uh, left, uh, you're sliding in nicely, but don't, don't give away your, your centre, yeah? Hip, of course, is going in, but not bad, back, 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 back. Don't do that, yeah? Last eight seconds. Okay, that was a very quick first. Okay, good. Any questions? No? Like, I'm, I'm really mindful that, uh, like, we're already kind of halfway through the key hard and we've done two combinations. So I, I, we're not going to kind of do it all together. Uh, I trust that you're training hard and I don't have to count uh, with uh, some sort of gusto in order to make you train hard, yeah? And this is not this type of course anyway. So we're going to move on. Unless you've got any questions, you've got five seconds. Sensei, what's the difference between Yori Ash and Toby Conde? Good question, Matthew. Okay, so Yoriash, uh, Yoriash is just uh, describing your, like, this Yoriash, Yoseyash, and Okuriash, and they're just three different ways to move within, with, to slide, to, to, to drive forward. So, so you, Yoriash is, is when your back leg is driving and your front leg moves as a consequence. Now, that might mean that your back leg moves as well. Of course, generally speaking, it does, yeah? So, you're making Yoriash back leg move, you slide. 
Uh, your seash is, is a little bit of compression, so your back leg moves a little bit, and then you slide again. Uh, you get more distance. And okuriash is when you put your feet together and the momentum of your body going forward takes your gravity over, over your two legs and then you push forward again. So it's basic, uh, basic three types of movement. It's kendo basically. That's how they move in kendo. It was transferred to karate. It's kind of like just three different points within a spectrum of possibility. That's all it is. Uh, whereas tobi konde, to tobi means to fly. Konde, common means to push or to, yeah, to stamp, to push. And so what you're doing is you're using your leg to push and make your body fly. So it's, a different from, it's different from kind of like the way that we slide. This is kind of a step and drive. So Tobi Konde is where I'm really, of course I'm pushing for my back leg first to get me halfway. But once I'm at this point, it's this leg that takes over. And this is going to kick the floor and force my body to kind of fly forward. And I make that extra distance. That's all. All it is is Japanese. It doesn't make it doesn't make any difference. Much more important to do it, to be able to do it, rather than to say it. Okay. Ru says us because he oh. can't speak Japanese. Nihongo ga dekinai Okay. Let's start. Next one. Okay. Jukamai. Jukamai. So stepping back, and you can itch. and then forward. We're watching it as you land. You rack and hoizuki freestyle. Okay, stepping back, Hagyuke. Forward, Mawashigeni, you rack and to Oizuki. Okay, so that's it, first four techniques, yeah? So, I'll show you from the side. We're stepping back, Hagyuke. Forward, Mawashigeni, you rack and Kakazuki. Make sure we're back, this. One, two, three, four, three. Understand? That's all. Give it a go, guys, try it. Ball drive on that, drive in to that last Oizuki, yeah? Back leg, back leg. And don't step back on the Arakan and enroll. Karen, Aguke, not Aguke, Aguke, block. Okay, okay guys, let's just talk about that for a little bit. So, a few things going on there. Um, so, okay, first of all, it's from Jukamai. Yeah? Let me show you from, okay, I'm sure, uh, trying to find a good angle. This angle, maybe. Okay, so, uh, you're going from Jukamai, stepping back first. Then, like, good cut you with your hip, make sure you're landing in good handy, normal handy. But then don't keep your, like, you can keep your form briefly to make this safety. As soon as that washing game starts, Get your Kamai in. Don't be, don't be cluttered by the technique that you've just done. The technique that you've just done is finished. So it shouldn't be affecting the technique that you're doing at the moment. Just like you shouldn't be thinking about the technique you're going to do after whilst you're doing the technique. You shouldn't be cluttered by the technique that you've just done. Understand? So for, after you finish this IQK, release. Get this Kamai. Allow your foot to come round. Same here. It's like you're, you're making more shigeri. Your elbow's there. So let it fly with that back leg drive to make you rack him. Then you're not gonna stop for this. The only, there's only, the only time that you ever snap back for your rackham is when there's nothing else. Like if there's, if there's kind of, for example, you rack him, MP, then you're not going one, two, three, it's just one, two. Or this, you rack him, Yakuzuki, you're not going one, two, and slowing it down, yeah? The hikite, the hikite is the snap. The hikite is the, is the connection. So this is the same, yeah? You've kicked more washi This elbow's there. Drive. And that driving leads to the oizuki. This, how you rack him to the oizuki. Not one, two. Okay, that's one point. Second point, make sure you're kind of mindful of this plyometric cut. So you're cutting your hip to go forward. One, two, three. You're this plyometric for the Aggie UK, the Aggie UK is the more she gets. Don't step back dead. Good happy dash, hips pull, load that back leg, use that arch of the foot to spring yourself forward from the more she gets. Understand? Okay, give it a go, guys. Any questions, just ask.
HDK Sweden, you have cleverly lit your dojo with that big window at the back so I can't see what you're doing. Well done Katrina, that must be your witchcraft. Oh, it's a freaking stick. <laughs> All I can see is four this shapes but no four. Yeah. Guys, okay, yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. Okay. Oh. Now I can see you guys. Thank you, HDK Sweden. Now I can critique you. Um, okay, look. Uh, plyometrics, this plyometric bounce is kind of important, yeah? And, it, and it, 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 like, as long as you hit that point, you know, you're hitting that point of our UK. And the more you get that ingrained, the more you can use it to kind of produce explosive power. Uh, in the opposite direction. So this is just basic plyometrics. Plyometrics is just kind of using the stretch short cycle. Okay, a bit scientific, but like if you just, if you have your arm out and you straighten your arm, sorry, if you have your arm straight and you bend your arm, you can create explosive power. But if you, if you kind of contract that bicep, as your arm is straightening, then you can create more explosive power. It's more powerful. It's called the stretch shortened cycle. As in you're stretching your arm, you're stretching your bicep, you're not using it, you're using your tricep of course, but you're stretching your bicep and then you use it, it creates more explosive power than just it being at rest and then you use it. And so you're doing that not just with your bicep but with your whole body. And so from here, you're compressing, you're compressing your body, you're, you're stretching your thigh, etc. You're stretching loads of muscles and then you're going to use those muscles to create that explosive power. It's what gymnasts use, it's what, you know, uh, basketball players use, it's what the WKF fighters use all the time and it's what we use in karate all the time, yeah? So, try to do that. Don't go dead. Don't be dead at this point. Yeah, make sure you're trying to hit that, that explosive power to produce that more again. So soon, the stepping back is the stepping forward. The stepping back is the stepping forward for that more again. You understand? Yes. Try that. Second point, make sure that Oizuki is connected with your back leg. Remember, as much as, as free as the Midan syllabus is, there's still those connection points that you're showing. So, don't be kind of stepping back, driving forward, and then falling forward into the Oizuki. Don't be doing this, yeah? You're stepping back, forward, more again, and still, still that driving in Oizuki. Okay? Okay, last 30 seconds, guys, give it a go. Any questions, just ask. Julie Hawthorne, that last one's always Yeah, oh yeah, okay, you know what I'm saying. Maybe I'll just call you doing gaps in the bottom of it. Then Chris Price, relax, relax that Ag UK hand uh, a little bit earlier, yeah? So to facilitate the more shigeri. You're holding it too long and it's just inhibiting your kick. Okay, Yame, relax. Any questions, guys? No, nope. everybody seems okay. The one thing I would say is that, is that there's a lot of things going on, yeah? I mean, of course, this is a need and uh, syllabus. Um, if there's things that you're finding difficult to kind of coordinate, slow it down. Like, like I said, speed is ego. Timing, connection is what really good karate is. Uh, you know, like to quote that famous karateka, Ueshiba sensei from Aikido, very famous karate instructor. He said, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So start with slow. Get it slow, make it smooth, and then speed comes naturally. If you try to kind of go fast, sometimes in that, that need and that desire to, to go fast and strong, you're actually inhibiting speed and power, yeah? So just take your time, 
work on it, work on the principles, work on the connections, work on the coordination, then it'll come. Understand? Excellent. Okay, we're going to do one more combination from the, the Needham syllabus, uh, just because it's a little bit of a different, uh, different idea. Uh, it's more about hip strength and stuff, uh, and then we'll move on, yeah? So, because we're yeah, only 40 minutes in. Okay, so, last one, last one of the Needham syllabus. So, all we're doing fr uh, from here is Mawashigeri Ashibarai in Gakazuki, yeah? And we can shovel back, step back, so round Mawashigeri, up Ashibarai in Gakazuki, back to freestyle. So, there's no real form in this. Everything is free, everything is free. Where it's showing kind of a lot more hip strength, hip control, abdomen control, yeah? So give it a go. Ashibrai, so, so it's your like right leg Ashibrai, left leg Ashibrai, sorry, right leg Moshigeri, left leg Ashibrai, right hand Gakazuki, or the opposite. Okay, give it a go, guys. Uh, Maurice, relax those shoulders, yeah? It's a little bit tense when you're punching. Reba, a little bit pulling that Ashabrai across your body, yeah? It's a little bit too straight, the Ashabrai. What's that say? Yes! The kicks, more here. Is it always uh, in the grading syllabus with the koshi? Yes! Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, mate, guys, let's just talk about this for a little bit. Um, okay, so, yeah, look, two ways to do something, an easy way and a difficult way, always choose the difficult way, okay? The easy way will take care of itself. So if you're pressing more shigeri, then this, with the top of your foot, in step, easy. Okay, kick with the ball of your foot, is more control, uh, a little bit more kind of challenging, choose that way, always practice that way. Uh, and, and then you have an option, okay? Uh, but if you only practice the easy way, that's the only way that you'll ever be able to do. Yeah, when you learn to drive, you want to learn with, uh, you know, manual. Then you can always drive a, an automatic. But if you learn with an automatic, you can never drive a, a, a manual. It's that kind of feeling, yeah? So always choose the hard way. Uh, so, so when we're doing this, although it's freestyle, like I'm seeing quite a lot of people kick straight. So you're, you're kind of kicking this kind of straight more what you're getting. Straight more here. Like, you can make it look quite flashy, quite fast, pinging it away. Yeah, but like grading examiners are looking much more deeper than the superficial. So, making sure you're getting this proper, traditional Mawashigeri, it's coming round. Completely round Mawashigeri. Understand? That's one thing. Second thing is that the Ashibrai is a little bit different. So a lot of people are kicking straight and Ashibraiing round. So you're kind of kicking straight and then ashabrying round this way. It's the opposite. The ashabrai is going out to in. Out to in. As if you're hooking someone's foot. Okay, so the Morshigeri is coming round and the ashabrai is coming in. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Let me go back a bit more. Um, so you're coming round and then you're going out to in before driving in Gakazuki. You understand? Yes. And your foot, you must show that hook of the foot. This is where you hook someone's uh, ankle. Okay, and that's one point. Okay, last point is that after you've done the Ashibrai, okay, so you've just done the Washigeri, you've done the Ashibrai, that back leg is driving in for the Gakazuki. Don't fall into the Gakazuki. Still have that drive of the back leg, body mass forward, punch it. Understand? Okay, one minute guys, give it a go. Any questions? Please ask. Julie, hold on, don't come up on the Ashabrai. Stay low, yeah? Everybody do that, yeah? Don't come up on the Ashabrai. Resist that temptation. Then uh, Lynn Padgett, a little bit round on the Ashabrai, yeah? Forward to back on the Ashabrai. You'll, you know, like, don't, don't, don't kind of uh, make it difficult for yourself by going round, round. Oh, more oh, finally, relax your upper body. Relax your upper body, yeah? Relax your upper body, you're too much like, like this when you're trying to kick, yeah? 
Olivia Javad, you'll do the same. Queen two round for the Asher Bride, yeah? Okay, yeah, mate, just watch, guys, watch. Look, like I want you to have this feeling. I want you to have this feeling that you're, you're, you're coming out to in, this feeling, yeah? You're kind of hooking, hooking someone's leg. And once you're hooking leg, you're using the stomach muscles to kind of Asher Bride. It's the stomach muscles that is Asher Bride, not the sweeping of your leg. Sweeping of your, like coming out, that takes time, yeah? It's quite difficult to do in time, but, but this kind of, this kind of like hook to swing and, then, and then, then pulling in and then using your abdomen compression to kind of get that foot up, that's what you're trying to work on and show more importantly. And, uh, and, and last point, after you have done that, don't give over this power. A lot of people are kind of coming up with the Asha Bride. So your leg comes up, everything comes up. Very difficult to compress your abdomen when you're stretching. Compress, squeeze, squeeze feet. And the more you do that, the more power you have in this leg in order to drive forward Gakazuka. Understand? Yes. Okay, last 30 seconds, guys. Any questions? Just let me know. Yeah, Evelyn, nice, that's it, good. Evelina. Yeah, good. Then a little bit, uh, Katrina, a little bit more drive in on that Gakazuki, yeah? Back leg drive, yeah? Don't fall into it, guys. Really stretch that Gakazuki out, yeah? So you're really stretching your thigh muscle, your back leg thigh muscle. Pressure on that Asha Bride, man. You got the flexibility. Sink down. I don't want you to see. I don't want to see you bobbing up and down. Yeah. Squeeze it. Yeah, yeah. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Then allow that back heel to come off the ground when you're driving in Gakazuki. Yeah. Don't inhibit yourself. Okay, Ame. Good, good. Any questions? We all good? Okay, okay, good. So look, um, that's the Nidan syllabus. Well, it's not the Nidan syllabus, of course, there's more, more combinations, but that's the general theme of Nidan, yeah? Uh, going from shoulder up, which is, again, like, like that clear form, showing the principles, precise movements within the, 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 uh, the fulfillment of your potential or the individual candidate's potential, okay? Nidan is that little bit more to, to be able to have the form and then relaxation afterwards. Have the form, then relaxation afterwards, yeah? Okay, so let's go to Sandan. Sandan is, is a lot more free. So although we're still hitting those points of connection, one technique rolls into the next technique, rolls into the next technique, rolls into the next technique, yeah? And you're having that continuous flow, flow, flow. Even though there is a, a little bit more uh, kind of kihon form or holding your form in, um, in, in the Sandan syllabus. It's only the first one I think that you start from Jukamai, everything else you start from form. Okay, so let's just start the first one. Okay, so. The first, uh, first combination in uh, Sandan syllabus is, is Gohon Ski, five punches. One step, five punches. So let's just do, let's just do three punches first. Okay, three punches. So, so from here, I want you to, so you're only stepping, you're only stepping once, but that doesn't mean you can't make a little bit of Yoriash. So a Yoriash step, that's all you're doing. Yeah, so, so if you have that in mind, a little bit of Yoriash step, relax. Actually, let's just practice that for now, yeah? So front come on, you come on, a little bit, foot slide, stepping in, relaxing back to you come on. And then you can find your space, slide, step, relax. Okay? Slide, step, relax. Okay, this is a little bit more free. You don't have to think about keeping your heel on the ground, just kind of flow, flow, flow. Keep your guard, keep your fall. Okay, try that for 30 seconds, let me see what you do. Okay, try to maintain the same height, guys. Like, you want to you make this as, 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 as uh, unclunky as possible. That's a technical term, unclunky. Don't do, don't do clunky karate, yeah? So, so what I'd suggest is that 
like you have that kind of flexibility in your in your knee. You know, obviously we're all some people are challenged more than others, but like in Japanese they say they sort of say uh, you know um, like konkatsu yarawakai means means have soft joints, flexible joints, and and what they mean by that is is that you have that nothing set. Like when that foot goes down, that angle it's set. No, they, you have flexibility. So even though your foot's gone down, that or your foot's touched the ground, there's still flexibility in that knee. Now that kind of is built up through thigh strength. Not so much kind of like whether your knee is good or not, but whether your legs are strong or not. Yeah. So so try to make your your your, um, your joints soft. That's really important. And then once you do that, you don't you're not so clunky. You land on the ball of your foot. You're flowing forward. And at some point you'll transfer forward. But I'm watching quite a few people who are one set up down. Don't let that front leg inhibit forward motion. Okay, you don't want to kind of have to go over your front leg in order to step forward. Yeah. Okay, that's just something to bear in mind. Yes, Bjorn. Is it the showman, the showman, or how many the showman? Don't worry about it. This is just um, just stepping smoothly. So just let let yourself transition naturally. Okay. I know some people are, are a little bit challenged, like, like obviously there's a whole host of different uh, uh, floors that people are training on, some people are wearing shoes, some people aren't wearing shoes. I get it, it can be uh, exceptionally challenging. But in normal circumstances, in an ideal situation, then this is what you should be thinking of. Okay, let's try salmon ski. So, all you're doing from here is, is think, is th uh, let me see, yeah, let's do salmon ski. So this one, two, three, relax. So, you're doing Kizanazuki, kind of Kurazuki feeling, like this sweeping punch, landing in Gakazuki, relax. So you shuffle back, this one, two, three, and back. One, two, three, and back. Okay, try that guys. Salmon ski, one step, salmon ski. Not step and then punch three times, like, like we did at the beginning, that's very different. Through the transition of movement, three times. Give it a go. We're just uh, standing you know, this way, so people can see. If you get lost, you can watch room. Vincent, are we have pick and take each time? Say again. Do we have pick and take? No, no, not necessarily. Just relax. Just keep that. Just keep that hip and elbow connection. So, so you're going one. Your other hand doesn't move. Two, like hip and elbow connection. Three, like not really necessary. In fact, don't make hickey tape. It's it's too basic. Okay, that makes you happy, Sandra. Yeah, good. Good. Then, Carl, try not to bob up and down. Okay, smooth transition. Yeah. Then, Robbie Jenkins, like a little bit leaning in, yeah? Keep that center line straight. Then, Phil Hickson, you're a little bit opposite. You're, you're a little bit allowing your, your kind of two hip dominance and your hip is going forward and you, and you forget to take your upper body. Compression of your abdomen, so when your hip goes in, your whole body goes in, yeah? Okay, okay, good. Okay, let's try, let's try your whole ski for punching. Four punches. So, so from here we're going one, two, three, four. So we're kind of finishing with Kizamazuki feeling, Kizamazuki feeling. But so this Kizamazuki, Gakazuki feeling, Chokazuki, Kizamazuki. That feeling. So again, take your time, get the timing right, take your body with it, make that smooth slide, punch, 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 punch. Relax back into Kamai. Understand? Then uh, Rejo Palo Javi, Palo, like don't, don't step and then do a couple of punches afterwards. Try to make sure that each punch is equally spaced. Uh, Rejo, the, the person on the right, you're doing, you're doing uh, two at the end. Equal space between each. I don't know if I've got your name right.
Then uh, P phone, I don't know who P phone is, the person with the dog in the, and the person in the back of the fridge, whoever that is. You're leaving your hip too behind too much. P phone, I don't know who you are, but you're, you're going one, two, three, and you're punching across your body on that third one. Don't, make sure it's square, yeah? Okay, yummy, yummy. Okay, so um, I just like just saying P phone, uh, you're doing it, but, but uh, there's a few people doing it. So look, once you've rotated your hips, then, and you're square, so, which is the second punch, then you don't really need to kind of use your hips uh, in, unless, until you get to the end, really. So, so like a lot of people are going, this is what you're doing, you're kind of, you're punching, and then you're rotating into Gakazuki, and you're continuing to rotate as your body, and then you find this third punch is kind of coming across your body, uh, because you've rotated too much, we rotate our hips when we're standing still in order to get body mass behind our techniques. That's all. Like if I'm, if I'm standing still and I'm going to punch Gakazuki, then there's no point in me doing this. I have to get my body mass, my weight, time speed to create kinetic energy. So this in itself is not creating power. It's the mass behind it that I, I put behind my punch. So if all of my body is moving forward as we step then that's 100% of my body mass. That is 100% of potential energy. So to rotate your hips slows you down. To punch across your body not only slows you down, but then weakens the connection. So all you're doing is you're thinking that you're creating more power, you're actually reducing power. So this first punch, you're kind of probably going to naturally rotate a little bit. So you're going to rotate a little bit as you go to hand me. You're going to rotate into shaman. Maintain this shaman for the third punch. And then the next one, the last one, you can, you're probably going to rotate a little bit uh, in, as you land in Hamni Kazamazuki because it's physically easier. So do that, but don't over rotate. Understand? Okay, last one, guys. If you've done four successful, successfully, five is easy. So, exactly the same. You're going one, two, three, four, and then just rotate that a little bit more into five Gakazuki, and then you're coming back to Kamai. So this one, two, three, four, five, relax. Yeah? The one, two, three, four, five, relax. Understand? Go on ski. Five. Try, give it a go. Sensei. Yes. If punch still as your foot lands. Say it again, sorry? Is the fifth punch still as your foot lands? No. So the fourth punch is that your as your front foot finishes, and the fifth one is as, as your body finishes. So the fourth one, the fourth one you're kind of landing in Hamni, but you've still got so much more to rotate into that stance. So, four, five, relax. Okay? Okay. Okay, a couple of minutes guys, any questions just ask? Sensei, four, is Oizuki or Kazamazuki? Uh, Junzuki. So, <laughs> Junzuki is kind of like somewhere in between, so so your hips are in kind of Shizen natural position. I wouldn't artificially rotate them into Hamni uh, because there's no need, your body mass is moving forward so that extra hip rotation is not gonna help. Uh, and Oizuki, then you're inhibiting the ability to punch again. So Junzuki is just that natural, basic, uh, natural feeling, Shizen feeling, natural feeling. Okay? <laughs> okay. I mean, you can... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, so, yeah, just allow that kind of connection of your abdomen, that, that kind of squeeze of your abdomen, it will allow you to make a pulse breath. So don't hold your breath, don't artificially breathe in, just <laughs> that feeling. Well, a bit exaggerated, but you know what I mean, Paul. Oh, Bjorn stubbed his toe. Tell him I'll not tell him that. <laughs> I'm sending Rue over to you, Bjorn, to look after your toe. He's very excited by that. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> Guys, make sure, you're, make sure you're punching center, yeah? Make sure you're going directly. I'm seeing people do this, yeah? Make sure everything, everything, one, two, three, four, five, is all down that line, yeah? And still you get kind of confused. It's still that slide step. That's all you're doing every single time, yeah? Okay, last 30 seconds, then we're going to move on. If you got any questions, guys, just ask.
Then Baz, Henrik, make sure that, that, that third punch, your hips are square, yeah? Don't let them over rotate, so you're a little bit rotating too much. Jim, make sure they're full punches. That looks like that, that uh, second possible, definitely the third is a little bit too short, yeah? Then uh, Barry Knight, don't feel the need to make hickey tape. Keep, keep that hip elbow connection. Okay, Ame, good, 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 good. Okay, so guys, um, I'm just saying, I was just saying to Barry Knight, but like, like that hip elbow connection. What I mean by that is that, like, if you like naturally relax, your your you know your elbows will come kind of roughly uh, to your hip bone, unless you're a Neanderthal, yeah. But ultimately, that's about where it'll be. And if you if you hold something, you know, you hold it like this, something heavy, you hold it like this. So basically, you're kind of anchoring, obviously in a metaphorical sense, but anchoring your elbow to your hip. And that kind of, that, that unit there is a fairly strong uh, unit. So like if you're carrying something heavy, that's how you'd carry it. Yeah? You wouldn't carry it here, you wouldn't carry it with your elbow sticking out, that's where you're gonna hold it. And basically, that's Kamai. That's, that's where your Kamai is. So, so when I say get that hip elbow connection, that's the start point, because that's where you're, you're strong. Until you get to that point, your technique's not gonna be strong. If you think about like a, a punch, the first third is very weak. The second third is very strong, and the third third is decreasingly strong or increasingly weak. So, so you always got to hit in that middle third of the technique. Anybody who does makiwara training, anybody who does bag work, that's the strike zone, not that part there. And we kind of get used to that part there because because of competition and because we use uh, sundame control, yeah. So, so we want to kind of get out of that because in in real impact work, it's that middle third. And as soon as you make that hip elbow connection, boom, that's ready to make, make contact. Before then, it's not so strong. After that kind of optimal point, it's gonna get weaker and weaker. I'm not saying you can't make power, it's just that it's gonna get increasingly weaker. So always revert back to that kind of like hip elbow connection. Understand? Yes. Good. Any questions, guys? Well, we'll move on. No, we're all good. Okay. 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 Let's move on. Uh, so the next one. So so that one that was was just freestyle, yeah, freestyle. Uh, but what I was trying to show is that you have that kind of level of freedom, level of kind of uh, level of kind of um, uh, movement and, and relaxation within your technique whilst maintaining strong control of your core. Next one's a little bit similar, but one technique leads to next. Okay. So from here, I'll, I'll show you first. Okay, we're going to go from, uh, I'll go from this angle, yeah? Okay, so we're going to go from uh, Gidam Rai. So, first of all, add Yempi in Kokut Stach. And then back leg drive the Wash Yempi. And then back leg drive the Uku Yempi in Kibrash. So, again, we're going, from this angle. Again, we're going Kokut Stach. And then Zempi Stach, and then Kibrash. Okay, this, this Kokut Stach. And then take the start to make Kibberach. Understand? Yes. Ag MP, Mawashi MP, Yoko MP. Okay, give it a go, guys. Back stance, front stance, side stance. Try. Good sense. Yes. Your network uh, bandwidth is really low, so it's difficult to see. It's lagging or whatever. That's because I'm moving so fast, Bjorn. <laughs> I hope so. I'm <laughs> too fast for the internet. Do you want me to show you again? I'll show you again, but this time I'll try to go slower. Okay, so, so again, one more time, guys, um, if you didn't see. So from, from Zeng Stach, you're driving forward MP. Okay, add the MP to back stance. Then back leg drive, wash the MP into Zeng Stach. And then from here, back leg drive, Yoko MP into Kibrach. So those three MPs, three stances. Okay, give it a go, guys, try. Mike BC, don't step there. Keep the same leg forward each time. Front stance, back stance, side stance, all the same leg forward. Just rotating, driving into stance.
Guys, you don't have to make so much distance, yeah? Just drive from your back leg, but you don't have to make yoriash or anything like that. Just try to maintain form. It's that explosive movement that you're creating. George, you're, you're driving too much into your Gwembi. Should be only a slight move. Then Helgi, a little bit more driving in on that last one, that Yoko MP. Don't orchestrate it, but just you've got you've got more push in that back leg, yeah? You can buy more push. Okay, yeah, mate, guys, just just watch. So um, look, a, a lot of people kind of get well a couple of things, a couple of things. I think uh, this is this is about trying to demonstrate that you have uh, the ability to create power from your core. So a lot of people kind of externalize their power, yeah? So, uh, a lot of people externalize their the power. Uh, oh, Rue's just getting a big pad. <laughs> um, and so, so like, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll externalize it and they'll, they'll put their power in their hand. And so when you start making MP, kind of like this, this hand kind of comes, comes round because you want to kind of project outwards rather than your body mass. Body mass that's creating power. So you get that hip elbow connection, body mass that's creating the power. Not your hand, but your leg and your hip driving in, driving in. And as soon as you get that, then you realize that your hand doesn't have to leave your side of your body. Just upload it. So, so if I'm doing MP, a lot of people are kind of coming round. No, it's my leg, my hip, driving in feeling. Do you understand? Nothing more, nothing less. Whereas a lot of people are kind of externalizing it in a little way. When it's just this. So, 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 my hand never leaves the side of my body. Never leaves the side of my body. Never leaves. So, my hand is rolling up with the hands on the hickety. Rolling round. Rolling round. And it's, and it's my body mass. It's my body mass that's creating power. And in essence, this is what this combination is really trying to show. That you've gone beyond trying to externalize, move your hands, and just creating power from your core. Understand? Okay, one more minute guys, if you've got any questions, please ask. If not, we'll move on. Then, uh, Evelyn, you're not stepping each time. So, left leg forward, left leg forward, left leg forward. Same leg each time. No. Core could touch, zen could touch, keep it Back stance there, back stance, back stance. Then front stance. More shape, other hand. Round. Yeah, that's it. Then side stance. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, that's it, Paul, nice. Okay, okay, yeah, man, guys. Uh, like I think some people are struggling with it. Well, not struggling, but uh, some people are kind of uh, maybe doing this combination for the first time. So um, you know, I, I, I understand that um, you're kind of going through the you know the shapes of the technique rather than the the nuances of it. So I get that. But but as you practice it, you'll get get more used to the shapes, uh, and then you can work on the nuances. And so what really we're looking for is is each technique leads to the next technique leads to the next technique. Just like the Gohan scheme, one technique leads to the next, the next, next, next. This is the same. So, so for sure, like, like I'm driving forward MP, but I've still got all that power in my back leg. And then from my back leg, I'm driving to round. So like, you know, I don't know if I'm moving so fast that the internet is breaking down. Bjorn, can you see what I'm doing? Oh, he's got his thumb up, okay. So from here, what I'm trying to do is like throw all my body into that front leg. And I'm trying to squeeze, relax. And the more I squeeze, the more I lock into Shawman for that Mawashi MP, the more I'm going to be able to drive out. It's a little bit like that, like last time I had UK to lead to the Mawashi Gary. I'm trying to create that explosive driving into my front leg, which releases for the next technique. 
So the, the end of this is the start of this. The start of this, is, sorry, the end of this is the start of this. And one technique leads to the next, leads to the next. Understand? Yes. All at the same time, being able to show. You know, this, this is not back stance. Like literally, Korkutsdach means standing with your weight on the back leg. So, you know, this is Korkutsdach. This is Korkutsdach. This is Korkutsdach. This is Korkutsdach. You know, this is, this is Kawazoi Sensei Korkutsdach. But ultimately, it's all Korkutsdach. This is never Korkutsdach. And if your weight is in the middle, you've got less power to throw in, less power to deliver out. So, weight is back. Weight is back, you're driving, sorry, weight is back, you're driving into driving. So be dynamic with that weight shift. Understand? Yes. Okay, last minute guys, then we're going to move on, for sure. Uh, Francis Jala, good effort man, good effort, well done. I'm watching you, you're doing well. Just keep your back straight, yeah? You're doing well. Yeah, yeah, good lad, good lad. Okay, I'm in! Yeah, man. So, okay, as I predicted, we've been running a little bit over time with the Kihon. But that's okay, because uh, I think there's, I've got less to say about the, uh, the catch and the Kumite. But, uh, I, I think, I can see people, maybe they're doing this combination for the first time. That's fine, no problem. Uh, once you do get used to it, just remember what we're looking for. We're not looking for a good Aggie MP, followed by a good Mawashi MP, followed by a good York MP. It's not what we're looking for. We're looking for your ability to transition from one to the other seamlessly. And not only transition from one to the other, but use the first technique as an impetus for the te second te technique, and the second technique as an impetus for the third technique. And so you get a level of flow to your karate, which is uh, not necessarily there, or well, certainly not there in the shodan, tiny bit there in the nidan syllabus, but all there in the sandan syllabus. So you've gone through that transition. Understand? Yeah, good. Any questions, guys, before we move on? No, that was good. Okay, okay, we'll do one more combination with the sandan syllabus, yeah? So this one, this one is, uh, so from, from Gakazuki, you're stepping forward, Gakazuki. And then from here, pulling back your Gwenpi. Then from here, hip vibration stop. And then one more time, drive forward, Gakazuki. So that's the sequence, yeah? So you're driving forward, pull back, squeeze back, drive forward. This feeling of, of one, two, three, four, feeling. Gakazuki, Zenkutsdach, Kibadach, Kokutadach, Zenkutsdach again. Understand? Give it a go guys, try. But it's all form now, no freestyle. Keep your form. <laughs> okay, I don't know if, I don't know half the screens, maybe your screens are frozen or there's people just standing there going, uh, so let's presume that you're Going, uh, I'm wondering what to do. Let me explain one more time. Okay, so, so from here. First one. So your start and finish point is Gakazuki. So from Gakazuki, you're stepping forward, Gakazuki. So from here, this stepping forward, Gakazuki. Then this, from this point, Zenkutach, arm is going direct. You're not moving your feet at all. You don't have to shift, you don't have to do anything. You're going to go direct, which is going to probably be slightly offline. Probably 30 degrees behind you, but direct your Gwenpi. Kibach. Then from here, you're going to prepare, load your hips, and then from here, rotate back, drive back into Kukut Stach. Knife hand block. Then last one, all that power, squeeze it together, forward Gakazuki again. And then you start all over again, stepping forward Gakazuki. Understand? Sensei. Yes. The actual. Um... 
So when you when you drive forward on the the Jack Suzuki is straight straight ahead. Well, then you get to all the uh, the M Pini shooters at like about thirty degrees, so you're just slightly off. And then on the last Jack Suzuki, it's straight forward again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, okay, I'll, I'll do it to the camera. I'll do it directly to the camera, so so that uh, you'll get a greater sense of where I'm going. Yeah. So I'm facing directly to the camera. I'm going to step forward, Jack Suzuki. So of course this one, showman, directly forward. Then my feet are shoulder width wide. So I'm just going to pivot on my feet and then I end up kind of going slightly offline for this MP. Then I'm going to load my hips and then block again slightly offline for this stop. And then last one, back leg drive, inner thigh muscle squeeze, driving forward again, Gakazuki, and back online again. Okay? Of thank you very much. Of course. Okay, give it a go, guys, one minute. Don't move your feet guys, don't, don't facilitate your, your direction for anything other than, like, don't, don't feel like you have to punch your block to the same direction, that's not what's happening. And Stuart, make sure you look where you're doing MP. You just look, make sure you look where you're doing MP. You're just not using your ninja senses and elbowing someone behind you. Then Petra, don't don't step, then punch. That drive of the back leg is the punch, yeah? You're stepping and then punching afterwards. Actually, actually, yeah, mate, guys, yeah, because I think quite a few people do this. I'll just say to Petra, but quite a lot of people do this, yeah? That kind of stepping forward or Yuzuki, it's not something that we practice that much, but it's, kind of, it's actually worth, worth practicing, yeah? Um, like, to just get that, that fluid kind of nature of stepping forward. I mean, you, in, in reality, you would never really do this, but it's quite challenging. It's challenging on your, your supporting leg, your, your ankle flexibility and hip flexibility. So it's worth practicing. So, like, if I asked you to step forward or Yuzuki, then there is no way that you would kind of, you know, step and then punch afterwards, yeah? Like, of course, you wouldn't do that. You're, you're kind of synchronizing the drive of that leg with the drive of that hand to lock in together, right? I mean, that's Oizuki. But in Gakazuki, a lot of people do this. They will, they will load that back leg, they'll land in Hamni, and then they'll drive. So what they're doing is they're, is they're shifting all their body mass forward, stopping in order to rotate the body mass. Well, you know, that's a little bit kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Rubbish, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> counterproductive, I don't know what word I'm looking for. Uh, but like, it's counterproductive, right? So, so if, you're, if you're stepping, then you're gonna use that, that leg to drive your body mass forward, there's no point stopping in order to rotate it forward. So, be used to that kind of feeling of loading the leg, you can allow that a little bit of kind of, kind of pulling, not pulling, but kind of rotation of the hip, kind of squeezing of the hip, but then still synchronize that leg with that hand. So you drive your leg and drive your hand at the same time as your body mass is shifting into stance. Understand? That's one point. Second point. From here, I'm gonna synchronize the rotating of my hip, the opening of my stance into kibrach with the pulling of that elbow. So I go direct, this direct MP. But the next one I'm gonna prepare. I'm gonna prepare, so don't only do one hand preparation and swing round. Rotate, prepare, squeeze into that preparation. Squeeze in, squeeze in, whichever way you're preparing, and then rebound back into stop before again you drive forward back to Understand? Yes. Okay guys, last minute, give it a go. Dan Pope, tighter preparation on the shooto, yeah? Really squeeze those uh, pecs. Katie, a little bit more kind of uh, solid in your stance, yeah? Uh, you're kind of fidgeting a little bit in your stance.
then thoroughly. There's no real need to use both hands when you do MP. Just rotate into it, and then you can yeah, yeah. And then you're kind of rotating around with your shuto, uh, blocking opposition. Your body goes one way, your hand goes the other. Don't, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't go with your hand. Go in opposition, opposition to your hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then Teresa, Finn, like a little bit more hikite on the on the uh, on the MP, yeah, and it'll it'll kind of frame your technique better. Yeah. Okay, yame, good, 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 good. So look, um, like I think with with kihon, uh, sorry, with uh, short on syllabus, it's just kihon, right? You're showing your form, you're showing your form, you're showing your form. With Nidan, you're making form and going in relaxation. Making form and going to relaxation. So you're still hitting those notes of the technique, those punctuation marks of the technique, but having freedom afterwards. Whereas Kihon, uh, with Sandan Kihon, you're maintaining, for most of the time, apart from the Gohan ski, uh, you're, you're maintaining form, but you have to show that you have relaxation within the form, which is, a, which is another step further. Like superficially, it, the, the, the kihon of, uh, of Sandan looks very much like the kihon of Shodan. But, but there's a whole, whole, whole subtle difference going on. And you've got to put that relaxed, fluid, kind of, dare I say, kind of du kumite feeling, that kind of kumite feeling into your kihon, uh, which you don't have in, in Shodan syllabus. So, so even if I got a Shodan candidate to do this kind of... Uh, kind of maybe a little bit co complex combination, or even if I got a Sandan uh, candidate to do a Shodan combination, then there should be a mock difference. One is going donk, 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 and the, the other one, the Sandan syllabus is, is hitting the mark, relaxing, hitting the mark, relaxing, hitting the mark. And it's that kind of fluidity, that relaxation, those kind of like, you know, who, who said that, you know, music is not the notes but the space in between? <laughs> the only musician I know, it's, and he a cliche. it's not a cliche. Someone famous said it. I think it was the golfer Scott Langley. He said it. Uh, so, so, who said it? Rick Hutton. He got that from me. <laughs> <laughs> I told him that. He was like, "Oh, that's good. I'll use that." No, I think it was it was like someone like Mozart or somebody. Who cares? Who cares? Who said it? The point is, music is not the notes, but the space in between. Sandan syllabus is not the, the kihon shapes, but the space in between those kihon shapes. And that's what you're trying to hit. That's what you're trying to have, that level of fluidity, that level of control. Understand? Okay, good. Any questions, guys? Uh, but it was Debussy, who was a pianist musician. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. <laughs> Just... is, that like the... oh, is that like the Golden Gate Bridge again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the Golden Gate Bridge is mine. Debussy said that, yep. Yeah? Amanda's just Googled it. No, she, she didn't. She didn't. She's, she knows it. She's a clever girl. Okay, good. So, guys, uh, if there's any questions, uh, then please ask now about Kihon. Otherwise, we're going to take a quick break. No, everybody's good? Okay, good. Uh, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and then uh, we're going to do uh, talk about Kumite a little bit. Uh, then there's very little I can say about Kumite because, you know, well, actually, a few of you have got partners there, but... Um, but we'll just uh, much more talk about um, about certain training drills that we can do and, and, and certainly what an examiner um, needs to see. Uh, and then we're going to do talk about kata. Then again, I'm not going to kind of go over a few kata. That's, that's pointless and, and this is not the time or place. But what I want you to think from now until then is out of the, the, the group of the, the 15 basic shotkan kata, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll briefly talk about what I, is expected as an examiner. Uh, what I'm looking for uh, as a grading examiner. Uh, but more importantly, if there's any questions that you have, any kind of like little, um, well, questions, that's the only word I can think of it, uh, little things that you want clearing up, then uh, we'll treat it much more, like the latter part of the class, we'll treat much more of it as a Q&A. So get your questions ready now. Understand? Yeah? Okay, get together, guys. Okay, ready? Oh, 
Ready? Awesome. Okay, so, Kumite. Um, now, let me just, uh, we'll just briefly talk about uh, Juipon Kumite, which is what is needed for Shodan syllabus. Um, and I, I, we covered this a little bit kind of uh, uh, in, the, in, the first, um, in the first session, like back at the beginning of the month. And I will put that uh, that link in the in the chat. Uh, but just to to kind of because it kind of feeds into what we're talking about next. So we're not going to kind of do it much, but, but like uh, uh, so, Jew Kumite is all about kind of uh, understanding distance and understanding showing that you have an understanding of dynamic distance. So up until then, you're doing up until like uh, you take second cue, second cue, first cue, first dan is Jew upon Kumite, right? Before then, it's Kihon, basic. Kihon Gohon Kumite or Kihon Ippon Kumite. And so Kihon Ippon Kumite, Kihon Gohon Kumite is set. So, um, so for example, if you know that basic beginner checking, Ru steps back in on right for Kihon or Gohon Kumite, he steps forward, Jordan, like I block, and we basically maintain this four. We'll do, we'll do Sambo Kumite. Sambo one, and that's one counter, and, and I've won, he's lost, he steps back, I step forward, and we're basically still in that distance, right? So that, that kind of teaches you how to understand understand distance, as in how, how long is your arm? What is that circle around you that is your danger zone? Anything that is in arm's reach of you is generally speaking in arm's reach of someone else. Uh, on a basic level, yeah? And that's why you kind of pair up with lots of different people, sizes, shapes, etc. because then not only do you understand your own ability to make distance, but you also understand other people's ability to make distance, yeah? So that's what Gohon Kumite teaches you. Kihon Ippon Kumite, one step fine, teaches you that same thing, but in a much more dynamic way. So, so he steps back in Barai, then if he steps Jorah and I step to the side, how can I step to set up a, a non-regular angle, but still be within that distance, that touching distance, yeah? So, so Kihon Ippon Kumite teaches you that kind of, um, you know, the clock face. I can set, you know, one o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10.30. You know, I can, I can step all these different ways and still understand that kind of distance, right? In a much more kind of a uh, fast paced way. And so that's the basic level. Then Jew Committee, Jew Pong Committee, is, is, is trying to understand that in a much more dynamic way. So trying to understand dynamic distance, that is forever changing distance. So rather than this kind of like shoulder, things that shoulder, we're now at kind of this. Two hands, two hands, like this. And so he steps back, I step back. So we're now at this distance. So he has, he has quite a bit, well, a whole arm's length to come in before I'm in danger. So if he steps uh, slowly forward, always suki, it's not really until it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not until now that I have to start to worry. It's at this point here that I think, oh, he's entering my space. So it's at that point that I then react to it in this dynamic way, and then driving him back to that distance, and then we coming back, yeah. And so because it's kind of dynamic, it's forever changing. We're not holding off form, we're kind of making it fluid. So, so, so if he comes, then I'm moving out, back, in, and that thing. So, so we're kind of having that dynamic understanding of distance, yeah? So that's up till showdown. So by showdown, that's what you've proven. And like, there's a whole thing about should you or shouldn't you do due committee freestyle uh, for showdown examination. And I know, I know some organizations do. Um, some organizations don't, uh, HTK don't. Uh, neither do the JKA, neither do the JKS, neither do the SKI, neither do any kind of uh, mainstream Japanese organization, but I know some do. And, and there's, there's, certainly there's an argument that it should be done. Um, but up until Shodan, up until Shodan examination, you are not considered, you're still a beginner basically. You haven't proven that you understand these fundamental principles of karate and fundamental principles of kumite. And so ju kumite, by this very, by, just by the very name of it, is, is, is this free, well kumite means exchange of hands, yeah? It's this free exchange of hands. So until you can prove that you have those kind of abilities, then you shouldn't really be examined for it. That's not to say you shouldn't practice it. And for sure, you know, people should be getting used to doing ju kumite all the time like even from low grades, right? 
but to be examined on it is a different matter, different matter altogether. So for sure, in HDKI, up till and including the showdown examination, you should be examined on basic principles rather than free, the free application of those principles. You understand? Yes. Yeah, good. Okay, any questions so far? No? Okay. Okay, uh, so, Nidan, Sandan. Then let's talk about Nidan first. Nidan for Duke Committee, really what you're showing is that you have a couple, two, three, four combinations that you can rely on and perform and do it well. On the very basic, like now you might be a talented fighter, and if you're a talented fighter, you're just showing your talent. Or if you're a good fighter, you're just showing that you're good at karate, you're good at fighting. But if you're not, you have to show that you have a good a couple of good combinations that you can pull out the bag and make it work when it counts. So let's just, um, there's a couple of things I want to want to show. Nothing to do with really kind of fighting a partner because most people don't have partners, but we'll just show these combinations, yeah? So, first one. Everybody just make two kamai. Two kamai. Okay, so I want you to make Kizamazuki Gakazuki. Then you can step back. Kizamazuki Gakazuki, step back, but. Yoyash, push, push, and as you push, you're connecting that drive the leg with the hand, with the hand. Okay, one, two, relax. Okay, let me just see you do that, guys, a couple of times. Matthew, push, push. You're only pushing once, you're only pushing on the first punch. Then Katrina, you're, you're moving before the, you start the first technique. Everything starts at the same time. Back leg push, center move, hand push. Kizamazuki, Gakazuki. Then uh, Ross, Becker and Ross, I don't know, Ross, you're doing Kizamazuki, Oizuki by the looks of it. Kizamazuki, Gakazuki. Same leg forward. Not you, Becker, you, you, you're doing it right. Because you're a star. <laughs> So you do have your watch on, which is uh, taking brownie points off you immediately. <laughs> okay, okay, yame, yame. So look, like we're not going to spend forever about this, but um, like yoriash, yoriash is the most difficult way to create body movement. So practice that. Anything else after that is easier. So, so for example, you know, taking taking this half step and pushing. That's, that's easy, kind of leaning, allowing your momentum to go, and then feet together, then going, that's super easy. But back leg push, not moving, not, not prefacing your moving, just pushing, that's a little bit more difficult. It's, it's not only a little bit more difficult, it produces less results in terms of distance made. However, there's no tell. There's no kind of wind up, there's no kind of a, preemptive move, yeah? So uh, so you need to practice that. Also, this ability to push them, then squeeze instantly. Push, squeeze. So like, it's really difficult to do this slow, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but I'm pushing with that leg, I'll slow it down. You're, I'm pushing with that leg to the maximum, and then before this foot lands, I'm squeezing it underneath again. So I'm having this, this drive release, this feeling. So what that means is that this drive is connected to the first punch. But then straight away I've got the ability to drive again. And I have to develop that ability, that pulse, drive, drive, relax, drive, drive, relax. So that basic Kizamazuki Gakazuki is, is a really good way to kind of develop that explosive nature of the back leg. Understand? Yes. Yep. Okay, good morning, you guys. Try, let me see what you're doing. Then with this, like Ian Alexander, no need to make hikite, yeah? Keep your elbow, elbow hip connection, don't go, don't go uh, fist to hand, fist to hip, sorry. Sorry. Okay, okay, so 
Okay, we're not gonna spend forever on this, yeah? But that basic kind of feeling, yeah? So just, just listen, because like, I, I can't really hear what you guys are doing, but in my experience, this is what a lot of people do. They, they go, I, you can hear my, like obviously I don't want you to make any sound, but if you did make sound, maybe a lot of you are going, one, two, three. And that, like foot, foot, foot. It should be instant. One, two, well I'll do it without counting. This, that feeling. And you speed that up, speed that up, that feeling, yeah? All you're doing is, that feeling. You understand? Yes. Like I'm exaggerating the kind of the sound on the floor, but you, you get you get to understand what I mean, yeah? Okay. Okay, let's move on guys, because we're running out of time. So Gakazuki, Gakazuki. Again, back leg drive. Back leg drive, step, relax. This one, two, relax. One, two, relax. Understand? Try that guys. Stepping this time. So you've got your left leg forward, right hand punch Gakazuki, follow forward step Gakazuki. And no need to make hikite. Punch, 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 punch. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Like most people are getting that. The only, the only, um, the only one little thing that I'm seeing some people doing is that you're kind of over rotating on that first punch. So, so the first one comes and you kind of over rotate, and then by the time you get the second one, your body hasn't rotated back. So just keep it square. So from this relaxed, you're in natural position. You're going into square. Hips are square. Maintain that right the way through. No need to kind of uh, rotate between the second, the first and the second punch. You understand? Okay, good. Okay, next one. Next one, just try. Try from here. Uh, the Gakazuki Mawashi Gary it down. Okay, nice relax. The Gakazuki. The Gakazuki is the Mawashi Gary. The Gakazuki is the Mawashi Gary. Okay, nice relax. Try. Give it a go. Then guys, the, the pulling back of the Gakazuki hand is the start of the Mawashigiri. So don't, don't keep this hand out and then kick. Don't snap it back and then kick. But the, you're driving in Gakazuki as you pull this back, that is the start of the Mawashigiri. So you're having that fluid one, two feeling and then down, yeah? Relax, relax. Okay, good, that's easy. Okay, last one, last one. Try, try Gakazuki Kizamazuki. So again, it's that back leg drive Yoriash. That Yoriash feeling on one, two feeling, yeah? This one, two feeling. So, Gakazuki Kizamazuki. Gakazuki Kizamazuki. Try guys, give that a go. Relax, relax. No, no stepping now, yeah? Left leg forward, right way through. Try to be relaxed, try to stay on the ball of your foot. Back leg drive, back leg drive. There's no difference between the first combination that we did and this combination. Then Chris Price, try to keep your back straight, yeah? Look, I know you're kind of looking down at your footwork, but back straight, head up. And then, then, because like looking down really affects your, your technique, yeah?
Then Manisha, quicker, like one, two feeling, yeah? One, two. Too much time between the first and the second technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Okay, yame, yame. Okay, good. Look, like I'm just giving you ideas, yeah? Like, like as a, uh, if you're a shodan going for a nidan uh, and you're not particularly kind of, you know, uh, if you're not a natural fighter, you know, which most people aren't, right? Uh, then you need to kind of drill. Drill these relaxed, kind of quick one, two, one, two, three combinations that you can just pull out the bag whenever you want. Then you might not win a competition. You know, you might not be kind of be able to catch someone who's a natural fighter, but that's not the point. For a grading, it's not about having uh, winning a competition. It's not about winning the bout. It's about showing that when it really matters, you've got a couple of one, two combinations that you can pull out of the bag, you can make distance, you can do it with speed and power, you can do it with explosive power and produce the results. And so if you're drilling these combinations all the time, then you'll be super relaxed. But you know, you've, we've all seen, well, I, I've certainly seen uh, lots of kind of horrible committee uh, bouts in, in a grading where you can just tell that this is the first time that anybody's fought under pressure and the front leg starts to lash out and the, you know, they're kind of backing up and kind of kicking like this and, oh, get away, and they start to grab and stuff like that. Horrible, yeah, horrible. You have to be able to be relaxed and, and just keep a distance and know that when you're ready, you can set those one, two combinations out and just let them go. Do you understand? So that's just worth, worth working on. The second thing I would say is that you must practice relaxed kumite then like a lot of people don't do this, yeah? Like in, when, I was, when I was in Japan, we used to kind of like, okay, pair up, okay, juke kumite, hajime. Kind of like relaxed juke kumite. And like for an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, we're just, you know, 20 minutes fighting the same person, okay, change. 20 minutes fighting the same person, okay, change. And you're just, you're just flowing, flowing. If you get touched, you get touched. If you, get, if you score, you score. It's not really about the points, it's just about movement. And like, so a lot of people, the kind of, uh, the, the tension and the, the kind of the anxiety of, um, of kind of doing kumite can sometimes become too much and everything becomes tense. And then they start to kind of, you know, do kind of jerky, kind of fast motion. And then as a result, their partner reciprocates and you get this escalation of speed and power. And before you know it, they're kind of like, people go for each other. And firstly, you can get injured. Secondly, you'll run out of steam really quickly. So a really good kind of, uh, a really good kind of uh, method is just like we'll, we'll, we'll do it with, I'll do it with the room. So a really good method is just to talk. Like a lot of people don't do this, but like just chat. So, oh, hello, you said, how are you? I'm Scott Sensei, I'm good, how are you? What are you doing today? Just uh, teaching and training. So that feeling, just chatting. How are you doing? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, good. How are you? What have you been doing today? Well, I don't know. You know, rather than don't do this. My name is Scott. That's not what you want to do. You want to just chat and allow yourself to flow and allow yourself to kind of be within the moment, just relaxing, trying different things. If you get scored on, great. If you get scored on, you learn something. If you're constantly blocking, you don't learn anything. If you're trying to kind of block at the last moment. You know, trying to get that counter in, then you'll learn something. So, finding a training partner, finding a number of training partners that kind of uh, you well, you have the confidence to just flow and move and, and move about. It's really super important. Understand? Okay. Then the only thing I would say, what's the difference between Nidan and Sandan? Well, you know, Sandan is you have that coolness about you. And that you also, especially if you're fighting someone who's a lower grade, you have that control. You have that ability to set them up. You have that ability to read them. So really the difference between Kumite, between a Nidan and a Sandan, I mean, unless you're a natural fighter, but even with natural fighters, is that you're now in complete control. And not only are you, like Nidan, you're in control of your own body. Sandan, you're in control of their body. You're putting them in a position. You're making them do something. And then you're going to catch them really easily. So, so you're showing that level of, uh, of control for sand and level. Understand? But it comes with plenty of relaxed due kumite practice. And not just for a couple of minutes, 20 minutes. Because I guarantee if you're doing due kumite non-stop for 20 minutes, 
you'll relax because you're either going to relax or throw up and so very quickly you learn to relax understand okay uh with this current medium of zoom i think that's basically all i have to say about kumite i mean there's very little else i can say well, unless you have any questions guys You're all good? Yeah, okay. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left. Um, so let me just, uh, this is where you ask me questions about kata, but like, before we get there, uh, the only thing I would say is that for shodan, shodan examination, like of course you can do basai dai, jion, mp, kanku dai. Then in my, well, I mean, I've been being a dan examiner for you know, the JKS and then WTK and now HDKI for like 20 years, just short 20 years. And before that, I was assisting all the time with uh, Kagawa Sensei and then before that, Kato Sensei, etc. So I've been on like, you know, probably well over 25 years of Dan examinations. And the vast, vast majority of people who did not do Basai Dai for Shodan examination failed. Now, that sounds really harsh, and it's not because. I failed them, or oh, I mean, most of the time I did fail them. Uh, but it wasn't because I just like, what you're doing, you should be doing Basai Dai, fail regardless. It's because, it's because uh, no one quite understands the, the level of anxiety that you get to when you're doing Shodan examination and, and they want it to make a, a big event and they want, to, you know, probably more likely they're sick of Basai Dai because they've been doing it for like the best part of a year and at least, at least uh, you know, two gradings beforehand. Uh, so they choose something else, uh, but it's not ingrained as much as Basai Dai is and more times than not They the the, the kind of the physicality of it is lost uh, They're tired, you know, it's the end of the grading stress pressure, etc, etc uh, They make a, a pig's ear of it and they fail as a result um, so I would say that as an instructor giving advice to a student um, Unless they're exceptional get them to do Basai Dai it just the success rate is for, so much higher, and at, at the end of the day, that's what they, that's what you want, right? You want you want a good success rate for passing, and they're more likely to pass with Basai Dai. I mean, that's not a hard and fast rule, of course. They can't choose any of those four, but that's just my opinion. Um, and, and to be fair, I have passed people who have done MP Gion and, and Kanko Dai. I'm just saying, generally speaking, uh, for Nidan, those four, right? Uh, MP Gion, uh, Kanko Dai. Basai Dai, then if they're doing Basai Dai for the Nidan, you know, they're likely doing, doing Basai Dai for Shodan, if they're doing it for Nidan, then that's alarm bells ringing. Um, so, you know, if, if someone does Basai Dai for Nidan in front of me, they're definitely doing Kanku Dai. I want to see them do a really long, the longest kata, I want to see them do a really good job on Kanku Dai. Uh, so, so my, uh, my, my impression about people doing uh, Nidan uh, kata is that you know they've got those four to choose they're going to get another one of those four as well uh, if they're doing kanku dai then they're probably going to get basai dai or maybe they'll get it depends it depends what they're doing but but ultimately kanku dai is the longest hardest right uh, so you know they're going to get if they do that well they're going to get a basic pass uh, but they must do one of those three basai dai is gone now they must be doing kanku dai mp or Gion. Uh, and they must really make it their own. They must have one of those catters and they've decided that one's for me, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then for Sandan grading, then it's one of the 15. Um, and so at that point, ignore those four, of course, ignore taking short on the hand catters, but the other six catter, then they should be really uh, kind of finding what, what suits them physically, mentally, whatever they have feel an affinity for and they make it their own and they have a special like tokui kata yeah that that chosen kata it's more than chosen it's special to you this kata is special to me and why is it special to them uh so for sandan level they've chosen beyond those basic katas they've chosen a, a tokui kata and they can do it really well understand yes. okay good okay so uh that's all i have to say your turn any questions expect somebody getting to Sandan to know all 26? No. Um, so, if only I had a syllabus close at hand. <laughs> uh, Tokukata. 
Basta die, basta show, kanku show, kanku die, Dion MP. That's it. That's it for Sanda. Oh, so you don't have to know. You don't have to know. Um, you don't have to know anything beyond. But I, as an examiner, I can choose Basai Dai, Basai Show, Kanku Dai, Kanku Show, Gion or MP. Those six. I can choose those six for you to do. So you need to know those six. I would recommend that beyond those six, you have another one as well. But if you do choose one of them, like, you know, I've seen people choose Basai Show or Kanku Show, uh, something that they couldn't have done for Nidan because they just find that interesting. So that's the one that they've done. Uh, and then I can choose from one of those six. That's it. But certainly no, not the 26, no. Anything else? Sensei? Yes. Is there any requirement around um, Bunkai at Sandan? Uh, no, not for Sandan, no. Um, well, I mean, no. But the examiner will ask questions. I mean, this is, this is um, like, for example, for Yondan, you will be... So, uh, examinee must be the master of all techniques, uh, can master principles, and apply them fully. Uh, questions will be asked in reference to the, the basic technique, and that's for Yondan. But for Sandan, um, it is, it is, questions will be asked about Tokui Kata. Now, that might be Bunkai, but that might all also be, well, why do you like this Kata? You know, what do you think is difficult about this Kata? Why is it special to you? So, you know, for Sandan level, not really expecting um, a, a, a deep and expansive understanding of Bunkai, but we are expecting that if this is your Tokui Kata, that you've spent time getting to know it. Uh, but yeah, Bunkai, not, it might be Bunkai, and you might, you, you, I'd want to see someone, even if they've never thought about it before, well, they should have thought about it, but think on their feet and be able to be a little bit kind of uh, uh, adaptive to the situation and have, have some level of a, uh, or some depth of understanding, but not necessarily. Yeah. Barry Sheen! He's got his hand up. And Sensei, is that the same with Nidan, with your Tokui Kata? Should you no. also have... No. No, there's no questions for Nidan. No questions for Nidan. Nidan's kind of still physical, right? Like for Nidan, what you're judging for Nidan is just purely physical. Um, this is a classic Shuhari. Shu like is like beginner to shodan, uh, ha is uh, shodan to sandan, and ri is sandan above. But so that shu is still kind of physical. Are you are you have you kind of internalized that uh, physical technique and being able to show it with freedom? So yeah, basically uh, the, there shouldn't be any questions about that. Whereas sandan, because you're going at the end of ha and the beginning of ri in that kind of classic uh, development cycle, um, then then there should be greater developments that are, that are physically possible to be seen. So you have to ask questions. Anything else? Don't say for students uh, choosing their Takui Kata, you sometimes hear talk about it, certain Kata suiting body types or temperament or that. What recommendations would you give to Nidan or Sandan students or candidates to choosing their Takui Kata? Um, yeah, I mean... I, I'm not a great believer in, in, um, in, oh, you know, like, you know, short, stocky people like me should do Sochin. I mean, like, ultimately, that's why, I, like, my Tokui Kata is Sochin, because that's what was pushed on me when I was a kid, you know, because I'm that body type. Or, like, someone like, you know, Stuart Amar Sensei, he's on the, you know, that thin, wiry, kind of whippet type person, like Rue, you know, oh, they have to do Onsu, you know, like, you know, it's just, it's just, um, it, you know, I, I wouldn't go that far just because, like, kata is like great poetry. You know, a great poem can be read by one person with all the inflections and intonations and, and backstory and life experience. And then it can be read by another person with their unique kind of uh, experience. And they will sound like different poems, just like a song. Rue is Those. nodding his head <laughs> approvingly, like just like a great song, right? So you shouldn't say, oh, this, this song is for young women to sing and this song is for old men to sing and that's it. No, I, I think with any great art like that, uh, there is always an ability to interpret it for your own. So um, that's really a, a horrible answer to your question, but the answer is there's no answer. You just have to guide, recommend, try, you know, experiment, and then they'll find it. Thank you, Senator. Yeah, Alex. Do you take uh, age into 
consideration as far as flexibility. Uh, you know, a young person might be more flexible by doing a high moashi, or uh, when it comes to certain age, some people might not be able to go as high. Yep. Do you think that in consideration during the exam? Yeah, in no, in no point in the, in the grading syllabus does it say Jordan or Judan or Genan kick. It, there's, there's, no, there's no point where it, it says that you have to kick a certain height. So it is merely, it's much better to kick low well than high badly. Um, and so, yeah, it's only, about, it's only about the technique rather than the target. I mean, if you're kicking off the side, that's bad. It has to be to your, to your center line, to your satu uh, But ultimately, if it can be Gidan, it can be Chudan, it can be Jodan, as long as it's good. Sensei, yeah. uh, what you said a minute ago uh, about kata selection, is that all true for Sandan to Yandan? Just basically, you know, figuring out what works for you? And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, like, some people have done, you know, like, I know people, senior grades, who have done a different kata for uh, their entire um, uh, grading syllabus. You know, it's like each grade, they've done a different kata, and that's, that's challenging, and, and, and people enjoy that. Like, I've done, I did uh, Basai Dai for Shodan, and I did Sochin for Nidan, I think. But that was, the, that was only because I was a show-off. And then Sandan, Sochin, Yondan, Sochin, Godan, Sochin, Rokudan, Sochin. And seven, dan, 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 I didn't have to do anything, so that was kind of nice. But um, <laughs> but my point is, is that like you know, if if you uh, if you want to mix and match and change, great. If you want to stick with it and do the same kata, great. And and certainly, like the well, I mean, there's a YouTube video of it out there somewhere of me doing back to side to side, uh, doing sochin when I was a sandan and sochin when I was a rokudan, and they are quite different. Um, and, and, and you'd hope that over the years they would develop and, and get more refined. So, yeah, I would just, if you want to stick with the same kata, do that. If you want to change the kata, do that. Wherever you do, just do it well. What can you, what can you do well? That's what you should do. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? No? Everybody's good? Okay. 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 Okay, guys. Well... That's kind of uh, kind of fits everything together. It's five o'clock, so uh, everybody fit together. Hands on my side. Okay, great. Pause.